It's October 2022 and this video is going to be about compost leachate. So what we've got here, this is a Rydan composter which works on turning compost on a regular basis and keeps it an aerobic process. And what happens as food waste breaks down, as you all know, is it some of it evaporates. So there's a chimney at the top there which you can't see. Some of the, the liquid escapes through that chimney. However, the rest of the liquid which condenses or just breaks down and is, escapes as part of the breakdown process comes out of this hole here, um, this outlet, and into this bucket. And that liquid is often referred to as leachate. Now, leachate is just a term for liquid that comes out or through or percolates through a, a substance. That's what this video is about. Now, the thing is, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos about um, leachate and um, everybody knows that it's something that you can use when on your, on your plants provided you dilute it. But I've never seen any real scientific analysis of leachate. No one really knows how good it actually is. Now, clearly there are a lot of uh, variables when, you, when, when you're making compost, so therefore the leachate that comes from it is going to vary a little bit. But I think roughly... Um, you're going to be putting the same amount of things into your compost bin, you're going to be using the same process, you know, once you find what works for you. So I think roughly your leachate is going to be reasonably consistent on a regular basis. So this is the leachate that comes out, as you can see, it's a very dark, very, uh, very dark liquid that comes out of it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to cut to my monitor because three years ago I got some funding, some European funding, um, to have this leachate analyzed for macronutrients, micronutrients, pH value, and for pathogens, specifically looking for E. coli and salmonella. And the reason why I got, I signed up to that funding was because I was looking to turn this leachate into a product that I could sell as a liquid feed. This is the report conducted by the Biorenewables Development Centre. Here's the table of contents, and from the table of contents you can see that they did quite a lot of analysis as part of this uh, European funding. In the microbiological analysis, they're looking for evidence of E. coli and salmonella, basically because these are the two main pathogens that you will get within compost. So. E. coli is an indication of faecal contamination, so usually as a result of rodents, you know, rats, mice, etc., uh, coming onto the compost and defecating in, in your compost. And salmonella, because in this case where I'm composting food waste, which includes meat, fish, egg, you know, things that will typically be associated with salmonella. The final Bit of analysis they did was they looked at four ways to eliminate pathogens so section 2.3 here filtration autoclaving pasteurization and then repasteurization as well so table one you'll see here that the unit is percentage w for w w for w stands for weight for weight and basically it's a proportion of the solute in this case the nitrogen the potassium or the phosphate in a solution so where the um, solute and the solution are measured in weight rather than volume. So for example, 10 grams per kilogram would equal 1%. Um, so hopefully, and it's a little bit confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. You can see here that there is the full range of macronutrients and again, the benefits of these macronutrients you can read at your leisure um, using the link in the description below. Now, when I was talking about the ratios, you'll see here that actually when you compare the compost liquor to four commercially available products in their diluted state, which is what is recommended, you can see that actually the micro and macronutrients are very, very comparable to these four commercially available products. So if we scroll down here, um, the next section that we come to is the microbiological analysis. 
Now, in this experiment, what they were looking for was they were looking for evidence of growth, and they were looking for growth that was typical of salmonella and typical of E. coli. But you'll see as you go down the report that they can't actually confirm for sure whether the um, whether salmonella is present without further testing. But in the case of this trial, it does suggest that salmonella is present. When you look at the E. coli results, though, basically the E. coli results are saying that there's, there's no evidence of um, E. coli because the morphology of the growth was not typical of E. coli colonies. So it doesn't rule it out 100%, but it does basically say that it is unlikely. So in conclusion, compositional analysis indicated that the liquor may be viewed as a useful source of available nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Micronutrient analysis indicated that the majority of those associated with healthy plant growth were in the range found in other commercially available liquid fertilizers when diluted to their working strengths. The exception was molybdenum, which is, in an order, which is an order of magnitude lower than that typically seen in other fertilizers used for comparison under the conditions tested. What they've also said is that the pH of the solution was very high, was 3.5. So this is quite, when I say very high, within the pH scale, the lower the number, the more acidic it is. So I'd be more correct to say that it was acidic, more acidic. So an acidity of 3.5 is in the region of vinegar or red wine. So they're saying it would be more useful for acid loving, i.e. ericaceous plants. And they've also suggested that it may be worth adding a substance like lime uh, to bring the pH nearer to neutral to generate a general purpose plant feed. And then they do finally make the point that if the input material, material is likely to vary considerably, then this study is just indicative of what comes out of a compost heap. In conclusion, what this means is, is if you are going to use the liquor or collect the liquor that comes out of your compost, then that's fine. But you've got to bear a couple of things in mind. Firstly, that it might have E. coli and salmonella in. So you may want to pasteurize the leachate before you dilute it and put it onto your plants, particularly if you're wanting to use it to grow fruit and vegetables. So in the report here, it said that they were, I've just written my notes, so excuse me, I just need to refer to my notes. Um, in the report, they, they pasteurized it to 70 degrees for 15 minutes. So you might, and, and there were still some traces or some evidence that there may be salmonella and E. coli in there. So you might want to just err on the side of caution and get your um, leachate up to 70 degrees and pasteurize for 30 to 45 minutes before you then dilute it and add it to your plant. So handle with care is, is what is what I'm trying to say here. Um, make sure that that E. coli and salmonella, you've had a good go at getting rid of it before you apply it to your plant. Obviously wear your gloves goes without saying, wash your hands, don't put your hands anywhere near your mouth whilst, you, whilst you're doing it. And basically, um, handle with care. Otherwise, there's no reason why you can't use it as a, a survival liquid feed. So in conclusion, I'm not going to use the compost leachate as a product, mainly because of the acidic nature of the leachate. I don't want to go to the time and effort and expense of bringing in lime and, and mixing it up and, you know, adding all that extra carbon to the process. The point is it's meant to be a very sustainable process. I want the least amount of um, input into that as possible. I want the least amount of transportation, the least amount of fuel use. You know, I, I want it to be as sustainable as possible. So what I'm going to do is, I, well, what I am doing is I've been putting the leachate into the um, windrow number one. 
because I'm not going to lose anything. All the nutrients are going back into that compost. The acidic nature of the leachate is going to break down the wood chip. As part of that breakdown process, that acidity is going to disappear. And the compost that I produce now is very neutral in nature. So I'm not losing anything. There's no extra effort. There's no extra fuel use. There's no extra carbon going into it. So it seems to make more sense to put the leachate into the compost. So what I am going to do is I am going to produce compost tea and I am going to produce that as a product because I think that is going to be very worthwhile. I think now that I understand how I can increase the concentrations of NPK within that um, liquid feed um, simply by adding more compost or less compost or uh, in my case I can also add avocado stones because they're a great source of phosphates and potassium. I'm going to produce compost tea. I'm currently working with the Biorenewables Development Centre again. They are doing some growing trials. It's going really well so far. I haven't seen the end results of touch wood. It hasn't all gone wrong at the end. But to all intents and purposes, that's what I'm going to be doing next. So that will be my next video. So if you want to find out about compost tea, remember it's not leachate. They are completely different. But if you want to find out about compost tea, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications button. And when that is released, you'll be the first to know about it.